Uh, my name's Pippa Hale and I'm an artist. Um, but I was particularly taken with um, a photograph that I found in the Guardian's room of a Christmas dinner that was being served to inmates in 1934. Um, and alongside that, finding a census from 1861, um, which actually said that there were quite a lot of older people living here. Um, and I thought that was quite surprising because usually you think of workhouses of people living in great poverty um, with a lot of illness and dying quite young, but actually almost 40% of the people that lived here were in their 70s, 80s and 90s. So that kind of started me off on a, on a train of thought really around food and well-being in older age. Using the volunteers was a really integral part of making the work. Um, really wanted to give the volunteers an experience that they wouldn't forget and that they could communicate with visitors that come to the museum. Um, so actually engaging them directly in the process and making them part of the event and of the film um, was really important. To eat in the room where, where we were, where the, um, where the residents had eaten, was just an amazing feeling to know that that's how it had been used in the past. That, that just seemed, yeah, amazing. And I've learned quite a bit, I think. It's been very, very illuminating, the whole thing. Oh, I, I enjoyed eating in the original dining room. Um, I could feel the atmosphere, actually, although it had been used for other things since it was used as a workhouse dining room. But I, again, soaking up the atmosphere it was very good. Well, it gave you a feeling of what it must have been like for actual inmates who were there many, many years ago, and this was their main meal. So, um, you know, you start to think, well, we're eating what we can today, you know, and uh, they're eating just what's put in front of them, uh, like it or not. It's not that bad. It's actually quite nice, but just, there isn't a lot of seasoning in it. So it was, you know, it, it really is just natural ingredients and not flavouring them up like we tend to do nowadays. It's, it is just good food. We know that the workhouse was more uh, occupied by people who were beyond working age and our volunteers are generally, uh, in the most part, retired. So there's a very, very close parallel between the people who volunteer with us now and the people who would have been inmates in the Victorian period. I think there's two things really. I think what I would like the audience to take away is to have a real sense of history um, and an, uh, of presence of a place. I think there's something very powerful about standing in a place where things have happened in the past and trying to imagine what life would have been like um, living in the workhouse. Um, but I also hope that it raises questions about how we deal with older age. You know, we're all getting older as a population and the workhouse was one way of dealing with people who had less financial means. Um, but as it sort of progressed towards the sort of um, interwar years, it was sort of like a precursor to sort of social care. And that's obviously something that's very relevant at the moment and a sort of live discussion in the media. Um, and were all the things that happened in the workhouse bad? Were some of them good? The fact that so many people lived to a ripe old age probably meant that the friendships that they developed here, the regular warm meals, the familiar surroundings actually were a really positive thing. Um, and then looking today with a similar older population who engage with the museum, albeit under very different circumstances, in a voluntary position, um, and how that forms a really important part of their social life and, of course, in terms of mental well-being as well. So I hope it sort of raises some questions around that too.